I was suspended from Somerville in the first week of September in 1994. I spent my sojourn away from school at my granny's house. Within a week she was dead and it was all my fault. My granny used to love spoiling us all. Me, me brother, me dad, Jesus, even me granddad. She'd pile on cups of hot sweet tea with, I don't know, Jaffa cakes and chocolate biscuits and marble cake and my favourite, chocolate tea cakes. I always knew when my mum and dad would get into fight, it would end up with me and me brother staying with me granny for the night while mum and dad sorted their shit out. Now I don't know if they ever did sort things out, but if they did, it involved my dad singing outside the chutes on Castle Street, or at least that's what I was told the next day at school. And then that led me to baiting the shit out of somebody. I never knew me mum's mum and dad. She never mentioned London when she talked about her youth. She was born in Stoke Newington, and in Stoke Newington she was raised. It was a home to Irish, Jews, Blacks and English. A place where you were everything and nothing all at the same time. I never had a clue what she meant by that. Her parents had moved to London from Sligo before she was born. And in typical Irish fashion, had eight kids before they realised it and were barely able to feed them. I don't think she ever really stopped hating my grandparents for having had a family in England. I remember her shouting down the phone to my granny one night, saying, I'm neither English nor Irish, just a fucking mongrel. She met my dad on one of those rare family holidays to Sligo when she was 16. After a whirlwind romance, she got pregnant with me and decided to move back to Sligo. A decision I don't think she ever stopped regretting. My granny and granddad went back to London after that and never again set foot in Sligo. So the only parents I knew were my dad's parents in Sligo. Oh, he has a great heart, my granny used to say to my granddad whenever he'd get into one of those moods. I had no idea what she meant by that, because to me he was nothing but a fucking cunt. My only main memory of him before Everton turned to shite was of him sitting on the armchair and screaming at the horse racing on the telly. He was a secondary school teacher at the private school, who I'm told was a great one for the liquid lunch. Now I mentioned that I used to go out of my way to look for baitings. That was true for the most part, from practically everybody, except my granddad. I'd go out of my way to avoid him if I could. Whenever anybody used to beat me up, I knew it was like out of a certain sort of frustration, like they knew I'd beaten them in some way, but not him. He fucking loved it. But my granny, she was class. She was always in a good mood, always bubbly, always trying to please. Even when my granddad was calling her a witless fucking woman, She'd just whisk us out of the room and tell us that Grandad needed his space. She'd then serve up big helpings of vanilla HB with two wafers. Or hand us a few quid and tell us to head to the gaiety for the Saturday matinee. She was never angry, never once hit us and always smothered us with hugs and kisses. Anyway, the Monday after I was suspended from Summer Hill, I was sent to Granny to sit out my suspension. Mam and Dad were at each other's throats again, and that meant I had to be got out of the way. I'd brought me Sega Mega Drive to spend the week playing video games, because Grandad was away at school, so there was no bother. Of course, in those days, if you wanted to play a video game console, 
you had to plug the aerial into the aerial port at the back of your telly. Now I had never done this as I'd never played it at Granny's. But I mean I knew what had to be done. But still, I was only 13 years old and had no idea what could go wrong. So I quickly stuffed the cable into the back of the telly, switched on the telly and the Mega Drive ready to play. But nothing, nothing was coming up. I checked the Mega Drive to make sure the power was there and it was grand because the green light was flashing away. Then I checked the channel on the telly and it was the AV one, so that was fine. So I turned to the back of the telly, pulled out the cable to make sure I had it plugged in the right way. And as soon as I did this, two small pieces of curved metal fell out onto the ground. I picked them up and inspected them, but I had no idea what they were. Anyway, I looked at the cable port at the back, and as soon as I did so, I realised I had banjaxed the cable port. And the cable port would no longer admit any form of cable, fucking Mega Drive or other. Afraid of what anybody might say, I took the two little pieces of curved metal, went outside the house and threw them in the bin outside. Came back in, put away the console and went upstairs to play. Later on that day, I heard the front door open. I sneaked out of my room and saw that it was Grandad coming back from school. Or the pub, no doubt. He went immediately into the room, sat down in his usual spot and turned on the telly. I listened fearfully from the top of those stairs. I heard him switch off the telly angrily and went to the back and fumbled around for about five minutes. Then he stormed out of the room and went into the kitchen where he had angry, angry words with Granny for about five minutes until suddenly it went quiet. Then suddenly my bedroom door burst open and my granddad stood there, his face red with beer and fury. What did you do to the fucking tell you little shite? I told you not to touch that fucking telly. Now I have to take it to get it fixed. And with that, he grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and pushed me onto the bed. He took off his belt, which was thin and wiry, and started whipping me voraciously. After about the fifth or sixth whip, me granny rushed into the room pleading with him to stop. But he wouldn't. His face was in a manic rage and no amount of talking to was going to calm him down. So my granny jumped at him, pulled at his whip in hand and told him to stop. For God's sake, he's just a child. Without breaking his rhythm, my granddad flipped around and turned his attention to her. He killed over three Berkeley him punches to the nose. And it was all my fault. 